unto others. We're all sisters and brothers. Do unto others as you'd have them do to you. You gotta just do unto others. We're all sisters and brothers. Do unto others as you'd have them do to you. Hi, guys. Welcome back to Mo's channel. Um, I hope you all enjoyed the first episode and that you learned a lot from that episode. I hope that you have started to live your life knowing your heritage in Christ and knowing that God is with you every step of the way. I hope you have started to do the things that you ordinarily would not have done. And I hope most especially that you were able to bless somebody else with that same message because that's part of our purpose here is to grow in Christ together and to be able to bring other people um, into the fold of Christ. Okay, so it's episode two <laughs> and we are going to start this episode with a prayer. But it's a participative prayer, so I want you to actually pray after me. So every, every sentence I say, just please say after me. Okay, all right. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, every prayer, everything that I have done for another person in this last week, let it be same unto me. Were you able to pray that prayer? What was your reaction when you got to the end of the prayer point? For some people, their reaction would have been, eh, God forbid. <laughs> For some other people, they would have had to think about a few things before they pray the prayer. And then, for some other people, it would have been a simple amen. Now, if you are one of those people that your response or that your um, answer or reaction at the end of the prayer was amen. I give it up to you. I pray that you continue to live your life in that manner, you know, and really this message will just help to, um, I guess, encourage you to continue to live your life in that way. Okay. If you were like me, <laughs> that had to think twice after, you know, hearing the prayer, um then this message is for you okay and you are if you are like those people that had to be like ah god forbid ah, this message is really for you hallelujah how many of you could pray that prayer search within your mind search within your mind as to your activities for last week Think about all the things you did for other people last week and ask yourself that question. Do I want people to do the exact same thing to me? We're going to be joining our text today from the book of Matthew chapter 7 verse 12. And it says, So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. Hallelujah. It's a very straightforward Bible passage. Do unto other people as you want them to do unto you. Very simple. But it's also very difficult. It doesn't even have to be a big deal. It doesn't have to be a big thing. It doesn't have to be until you do something illegal before you can't pray that prayer. Hallelujah. It can be something as simple as not appreciating what somebody else has done for you. It can be something as simple as someone not helping you when you need help. Or you not helping somebody that you could have helped last week. It could have been something as simple as, you know, just not respecting someone that you really should have given respect to. It could have been something as simple as not offering your service to someone that you really could have offered service for. It doesn't have to be a big deal. As long as you cannot pray that prayer that what you have done for somebody else should be done for you, 
then we need then you need to work on yourself just like i have to work on myself too hallelujah now i have come up with an acronym um for the steps that you know i believe or the qualities of someone that is you know trying to live their life in that manner in such a way that they can pray that you know what they've done for somebody else should be done for them and um the acronym you know um is pronounced others now what does other stand for o stands for opportunities c stands for thanks h stands for help <clears throat> e stands for empathy r stands for respect and s stands for service now what does o mean opportunities i want to look at that exact same bible verse from the message the message version of the bible and it says here is a simple rule of thumb guide for behavior ask yourself what you want people to do for you then grab the initiative and do it for them add up god's law and prophets and this is what you get it says ask yourself what you want people to do for you it doesn't say wait for people to do it for you it says you take the initiative and do unto other people as you want for them to do for you it means you need to look for opportunities to help people if you see that something is being done and it's not being done in the right way go there and try to help them go there and try to correct it at work there are many opportunities for you to do things in the right way or for you to help a fellow colleague take that opportunity you know at church they might say oh we need volunteers for a you know something for a food drive for whatever take that opportunity whenever you find yourself in a situation or you know in a relationship with another person it could be friends it could be family any kind of relationship think what can i do for this person that will make them happy what is it that i want that person to do unto me and then you do it for that person that's opportunity what is C for? C stands for thanks. Appreciate people. Say thank you when people do something for you. We all like to hear the word thank you. You know, but we all don't really know the um the impact it really does have on each and every one of us. Now imagine you do something for someone. Now let's give a simple scenario. Imagine that someone drops something on the floor and you pick it up and give it to the person. What do you expect for the person to say? A simple thank you. And when you hear the thank you, you're like, okay, you're welcome. It doesn't really bother you. You don't see much to that whole scenario. But guess what? When that person doesn't say thank you, it registers at the back of your mind that way. This person couldn't even say thank you. You know how you feel when you do something for someone and the person does not appreciate it? Or that's how the other person feels. Everybody wants to be appreciated. So let us make it a point of, um, let's make it our intention, an intentional thing to appreciate people whenever they do things for us. What does H stands for? H stands for help. Help people. There is help needed everywhere. Everybody needs help. Now, it might be hard for some people to accept help from others, but guess what? No matter what, everybody at some point in their life needs help. I need help. You need help. Everybody needs help. You know, you see people on the side of the road, help me please, I need this, I need that. And you know you have it. And you know that it's not going to cost you anything to help the person on the side of the road. But then you're going to sit down and think about, oh, what if the person, you know, does anything with the money? Well, what is your business with all that? You don't know how much you giving that person can impact their activities and their thought process for that day. You have a colleague at work that has a pile of load and you you are done with yours why can't you help that person instead of sitting down on the phone and doing nothing you have a friend that is struggling in school to pass a class you are doing wonderfully well in the class why can't you help your friend to also pass the class help people because you also need help one day and it is much easier to go meet people 
that you've helped in the past to come help you in the future than when you've never helped anybody and you suddenly need people's help. It's harder that way. What is E? E stands for empathy. What is empathy? Empathy is the ability to put yourself in somebody else's shoes. It's not the same as sympathy. Sympathy is, you know, you pity somebody. In Nigeria, we say, ah, hey, yeah, ha, ah, may that never happen again. Hey, I feel so sorry for you. That's sympathy. What is empathy? Empathy is thinking to yourself, if I am in that situation, what would I want someone to do for me? And then do it for that person. That's empathy. That's empathy. R, R stands for respect. We all like to be respected. Whether you admit it or not, you like to be respected. You like to feel important. You like to feel like your voice counts, like your opinion counts, like your voice is being heard. You like to, for people to know that you have walked into a room and acknowledge the fact that you have walked into a room. Everybody likes to be respected. Your gate man wants to be respected. Your maid wants to be respected. Your colleague wants to be respected. Your husband, your wife wants to be respected. Your parents want to be respected. Everybody wants to be respected. Respect does not always have to come from, you know, the superior to the inferior, from the rich to the poor, you know, from the worker to the boss. No, respect is reciprocal. It's a, it's a continuous line. Respect people because you also know you like to be respected. That feeling you get when you are being respected, don't deprive another person of it. And S, S is for service. Offer your service to people. You know, offer your service to people. In other words, I, I like to think about it in terms of humility, even though they are not the same thing. But service, you know, offer your service to other people. Offer yourself to do things for other people. Don't always wait for people to come and do things for you. Go ahead and do things for people. You know, don't always be the one controlling, oh, do this, do that, do this, do this. Sometimes you have to be the one at the other end of the, of the equation. Sometimes you have to be the one to do the helping, to do the servicing. Even Jesus Christ that owns the entire world still helps people, still offer the service. So who are you not to help some people? So that's others. Opportunities. Look for opportunities to help people. Thank people. Appreciate people when they do something for you. You know, help people whenever you have the opportunity to, whenever you have the resources to help people. Try to <clears throat> try to be able to be empathetic to people's situation. Put yourself in their shoes. Say, ah, if I was in that situation, what would I want someone to do for me? And then do it. Respect people. Everybody needs respect. Everybody wants to be respected. And then service. Offer your service to people as many times as you can. If you can live your life in such a way that you can pray that what you do unto your neighbor should be done unto you. If everyone could live their lives in that way, this world would be a better place. This world would be a better place because guess what? We are human beings and we are all self-centered. We want good things to happen to us. So whatever you want for yourself, if you can do it for your neighbor, this world would be a better place. If you are about to make any decision, anything, just anything you are about to do, any decision you are about to make, first of all, think to yourself, would I want someone else to do that thing to me? Nine over ten times. If your answer is yes, it's probably the right decision. And then if your answer is no, if you even have a shadow of a doubt that you will not want someone else to do that to you, then you're probably making a wrong decision. Let us live our lives huh, in a righteous way. Let us live our lives, you know, as God has commanded us to. Let us do unto others as we want other people to do unto us. So as you go back to school, as you go back home, as you go back to your marriages, to your relationships, think about what you are doing. That project you are doing at work that you are thinking, maybe, ah, maybe I should just cut corners. Maybe I should not spend as much time. Maybe I should not do it the right. Maybe I should just do half work. Think about when you have your company in the future, if you want your fellow worker to do it to you. 
Look at your relationships, your marriages. Look at how you are treating your husband or how you are treating your wife. And imagine that that person is doing the exact same thing to you. Before you open your mouth and talk to somebody and say, ah, you look ugly, you look dirty, ah, ah, what a dumb person, what a stupid person. Before you open your mouth and say that, please imagine somebody saying that to you. Then if you are comfortable with somebody telling you all those things, or someone saying all those things about you, ah, there's no problem. Well, I really don't think you'll be able to stomach that when someone says it to you. So please don't say it to another person. So all in all, do unto others as you want them to do unto you. So we're all going to go on with an assignment today. And the assignment is this. Every day, before you sleep, maybe before you say your prayers, I want you to, you know, pray the prayer. God, everything I've done today, let somebody do the exact same thing to me. If you're able to pray that prayer, then you're on the right track. If you're not able to pray that prayer, that's the time for you to go to God and say, God, I need you to help me. God, I'm sorry for what I did. God, I'm sorry for what I did to this person. And then try to correct it. And then, if you can live your life every day praying that prayer, you will see that sometime, at one point or the other, one day you will be able to pray that prayer. Hallelujah. Live your life right. Do unto other people as you want other people to do unto you. And that's the end of episode two. So as always, send me a message at moreforchrist at gmail.com or leave a comment. Um, and if you have any advice or any contributions, also you can comment or you can send me an email. Um, and we will see you next week. Until then, remain blessed and do unto others as you want others to do unto you. All right. Bye. Unto others, we're all sisters and brothers. Do unto others as you have them do to you. You gotta just do unto others, we're all sisters and brothers.